Glad to see you here this evening, and uh, we hope you have a good time studying the Bible with us. I'm Jerry Mullinax, and uh, we'll be looking at a passage here in just a few seconds. But I'd like to say welcome to West Hendersonville Baptist Church, the Wednesday evening Bible time. And we're going to have time of prayer now, and I trust that you, if you have any requests, you can always comment those requests to us, or you can let us know, email them in, or call them in. But we want to pray for your requests. I know it's been kind of tough staying at home. Like me, I'm sure you want to get back to church just to fellowship and um, shake hands or elbows or something just to be near people and other Christian friends. Uh, but here at West Hendersonville Baptist Church, we want you to know that you're loved and we're praying for you. And we really and sincerely want you to know that God cares for you as well. Let's take a time of prayer now. Pray with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. God, we appreciate the the way that you reach out to us and love us, Lord, even through our trials, Lord, even through a, a pandemic, Lord, you're right in the middle of it. You're controlling everything in our lives. We ask you now, Lord, to be with those who are at home, Lord, who perhaps may, may suffer through fear or discouragement or even sickness on their own. We ask you, Lord, that you be with them, comfort them, and, and just sit down there with them, Lord, in the living room or wherever they may be. Lord, and just let them know that you will never, ever forsake them. Lord, we just ask you to bless in what time we have here tonight in the Bible. Use it to encourage our hearts, Lord, and to inspire us to go on further in your work. In your name we pray. Amen. I tell you what let's do. Let's look at a passage of Scripture here in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12. And this is a, a pretty familiar passage. I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's about Peter being put in prison. Uh, we're going to look at just a couple of things in a brief devotion, and then, and then we'll have a closing prayer and uh, let you go tonight. How about that? In Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered to him to four quartinians of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now listen right here. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. I mean, he's totally surrounded by soldiers. He's chained up. He seems like he's a pretty important person at this time because they're wanting to make sure he doesn't escape. Peter was kept in prison. But here's the phrase that we're going to look at together just for a few minutes. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Notice something. Notice as we look at these words and consider this thought, but prayer was made. Look at that. But prayer was made. You see, prayer needs to be uh, purposeful. There has to be a purpose for prayer. A lot of times when we pray, well, you know, we go to the dinner table. We've got that prayer. I mean, it's right there. We know exactly what the words are. The, even our children know the pattern of our prayer they're already ready to open their eyes and say, pass the chicken, because they know exactly what the pattern is. And that's okay. A pattern's good. That means that we're praying. But there has to be a purpose for prayer. It says right here, but prayer was made. I don't know about you, but when you got up out of the bed this morning, did your bed make it up itself? Did your bed make itself up? I've never had that happen. I've come in the, in the evening sometimes, and my parents said, Jerry, you didn't make your bed. I wish I had known that then because I would have said, Mom, I told the bed to make itself up. The Bible says here, but prayer was made. You've got to make the prayer. You know, you've got to be the one to make the prayer. It has to happen. Now, I was raised in a, in a preacher's home. Dr. James L. Mullinax, preacher buddy and Miss Ann. You know all about those two. And we had to pray every night. I mean, every night. Everybody prayed, all six children. Everybody had to have something to say, and you had to make a prayer. I remember the first time my youngest sister, the youngest of six kids, had to pray her first prayer. It was after a Sunday morning service. We're all sitting around the table, all the food's on the table. My dad, I called him Big Bud because he was the one in charge. He said, today, Susan is going to pray her first prayer at the table. Can I tell you something? She was in a high chair. A high chair. She was just learning to talk. I mean, just learning. And it was time to get started. I remember she said, 
She shook her head. Not going to do it. Oh, boy. This Hey, this is a good show coming up here. Here's the big guy against the little guy. <laughs> How's this going to turn out? He said, Susan, I said, pray. This went on for a few seconds. Finally, he said, Dad said, pray. A couple of little slaps on the hand like that. you, And then all of a sudden, she bowed her head and said, I don't want to pray. Amen. <laughs> well, that just tore up the Sunday afternoon service right there. Even my dad got a good laugh out of that. But the fact is, prayer has to be made. It has to have a purpose. Here's a purpose. Peter's in jail. How's he going to get out? Imagine the faith to get Peter out of jail in the circumstances that he's in. You see, prayer is purposeful. Not only that, look what else it says there. Prayer was made without ceasing. Prayer needs to be persistent without ceasing. I used to say, think when I was a kid, that verse, you know, pray without ceasing. I thought they were saying pray without sneezing. Well, also, if there's a virus around, that's a good idea too, to pray without sneezing. But prayer, it says here, was without ceasing. Well, they meant business, didn't they? They prayed until they kept praying. They never quit. They just kept praying. Matter of fact, at the end of this story, as you know, Peter comes up to the house where all these people are praying, and when he knocks on the door, guess what the people are doing inside? They're still praying. So you see, prayer needs to be purposeful. Prayer needs to be persistent. Prayer was made without ceasing. But watch this. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Prayer needs to be passionate. It's not just anybody praying. We're the children of God. Can you imagine that? We have direct access. Now, through the Old Testament, only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Only he could walk back there behind the veil. Only one person. You see my finger? Only one person, the high priest. He's the only one that could go into the Holy of Holies. It was such a sacred place. You do understand that he went to the Ark of the Covenant. He went to where God came down. He was right there. It was such a dangerous place, meaning that if the high priest had unconfessed sin himself, he would be struck dead, and they tied a rope to his leg to drag that old boy out. I've always wondered, wondered how many they drug out. If it was Baptist, I said they had a heap of them outside, don't you? And he just drug him out, and another one, I guess, went in. But here's the deal. On the day Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Do you know what that means? Don't get excited down in your rocking chair there. That means that you and I have direct access into the Holy of Holies. Why? Because we're children of God. We're part of the church. Here in the Bible, it tells us right there that prayer needs to be purposeful. It needs to be persistent. And because we're the church, it needs to be passionate. But here's something else. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. Unto God. It needs to be pious. We don't just need to flippantly pray. Oh, I know the Bible says that we're, we're adopted. You know, we should say Abba Father. I remember one time, one of my friends really got shocked because he had heard about Preacher Buddy. He had heard about the pastor of Pelham Baptist Church, First Baptist Church. And so he was one of my friends. I said, well, let's go in and get us something to drink. He said, in there? I said, yeah, come on. In there, is, is your dad in there? Yeah, come on, let's go. I grabbed him. I said, come on, let's go in there. Man walked in there, kicked my shoes off, drug him through the door, went in there, opened the fridge, grabbed me something, went over, sat down, and he just stood there in awe, you know. There's preacher buddy. This is where, and he was frozen. He didn't know what to do. You know, sometimes we don't even realize that God's our father. We can walk right into where he is. We don't have to be uncomfortable, and we can just sit down and have a talk with him. Why? Because we're, he's our father unto God. Prayer has to be pious. Yes, we respect our father. He's not the old man upstairs. He's God, the awesome creator of this universe. Yet, we, as the sinners we are, have direct access unto God. Think about that. Hey, here's the last one. Prayer needs to be purposeful. Prayer needs to be persistent. Prayer needs to be passionate. Prayer needs to be pious. But lastly, look what it says. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. You ready? For him. Prayer needs to be personal. There's a personal reason. Have you got a loved one today that you don't know who knows Christ as their Savior? Prayer becomes personal. 
Have you got a child that's wayward and you're worried and concerned about them? You don't know if they'll ever they'll be safe or what their circumstances are? Prayer needs to be personal. You today, you're wondering if this virus is going to uh, take over the world and we're never going to get back to church. And by the way, don't worry about that. God's in control. With you, and Prayer needs to be personal. And it is personal. Prayer was made. Now, at the end of the story, Peter knocks on the door and he tells them he's home. The prayer was answered. You know, there's a follow-up to this thing. Even though you pray, have you got faith to accept the answer? Be willing to accept the answer. God's going to give you an answer. I heard about the lady who read the verse about the faith of a grain of the mustard seed, and you could tell a mountain to be moved. Well, it just so happened she could hardly get any light in her window because there was a mountain that blocked the sun, and she couldn't get any sun. She claimed that verse. She got on her knees one night. She said, Father, the Bible says if I have faith at the size of a grain of a mustard seed, I can tell that mountain to be removed. I want it moved. And she went to bed. The next morning she got up and there was the mountain and she said, just as I expected. Just as I expected. You see, faith has an expectation. You better expect God to answer that prayer. Have faith that he's going to answer it. He has answers, you know. He'll say yes. He'll say no. Sometimes he'll say wait. But he has answers. You have to be willing to accept that answer. In closing tonight, I want to say this. Pray. Get up and make your prayer. Make your bed. Make sure it happens. And expect God to make, to make that blessing in your life come true. From West Hendersville Baptist Church, this is Jerry Molinax. God bless you until we get to see you again.